There's something about caves. A shadowy opening in a limestone cliff that draws you in. As you pass through the portal between light and dark, you enter a subterranean world, a place of perpetual gloom, of earthy smells, of hushed silence. Long ago in Europe, ancient people also entered these underground worlds. As witness to their passage, they left behind mysterious engravings and paintings, like this panel of humans, triangles, and zigzags from Ojo Guarenia in Spain. You now walk the same path as these early artists, and in this surreal, otherworldly place, it's almost possible to imagine that you hear the muffled footfall of skin boots on soft earth, or that you see the flickering of a torch around the next bend. What drove these people to go so deep, to brave dangerous and narrow passageways to leave their mark? Half a kilometer underground. <gasps> Seriously, what was somebody doing down there with a torturous stone lamp? <laughs> It was created by these early artists in Europe between 10,000 and 40,000 years ago. And the thing is, is that I'm not just studying it because it's beautiful, although some of it certainly is. But what I'm interested in is the development of the modern mind, of the evolution of creativity, of imagination, of abstract thought. About what it means to be human. While all species communicate in one way or another, only we humans have really taken it to another level. Our desire and ability to share and collaborate has been a huge part of our success story. Our modern world is based on a global network of information exchange, made possible in large part by our ability to communicate, in particular using graphic or written forms of communication. There are three main types of communication: spoken, gestural, so things like sign language, and graphic communication. Spoken and gestural are, by their very nature, ephemeral. It requires close contact for a message to be sent and received, and after the moment of transmission, it's gone forever. Graphic communication, on the other hand, decouples that relationship, and with its invention, it became possible for the first time. For a message to be transmitted and preserved beyond a single moment and place in time, Europe is one of the first places that we start to see graphic marks regularly appearing in caves, rock shelters, and even a few surviving open-air sites. But this is not the Europe we know today. This was a world dominated by towering ice sheets three to four kilometers high, with sweeping grass plains and frozen tundra. This was the Ice Age. Over the last century, more than 350 Ice Age rock art sites have been found across the continent, decorated with animals, abstract shapes, and even the occasional human, like these engraved figures from Grotta della Dora in Sicily. They provide us with a rare glimpse into the creative world and imagination of these early artists. Since their discovery, it's been the animals that have received the majority of the study, like this black horse from Cuyavera in Spain. Or this unusual purple bison from La Pasiaga, but for me, it was the abstract shapes, what we call geometric signs, that drew me to study the art. The funny thing is that at most sites, the geometric signs far outnumber the animal and human images. But when I started on this back in 2007, there wasn't even a definitive list of how many different shapes there was. Nor was there a strong sense of whether the same ones appeared across space or time. Over the course of two years, my faithful husband Dylan and I each spent over 300 hours underground, hiking, crawling, and wriggling around 52 sites in France, Spain, Portugal, and Sicily, and it was totally worth it. We found new, undocumented geometric signs at 75% of the sites we visited. This is the level of accuracy I knew I was going to need if I wanted to start answering those larger questions. Barring a handful of outliers, there are only 32 geometric signs. Only 32 signs across a 30,000-year time span and the entire continent of Europe. That is a very small number. Now, if these were random doodles or decorations, we would expect to see a lot more variation. 
But instead what we find are the same signs repeating across both space and time. Some signs start out strong before losing popularity and vanishing, while other signs are later inventions. But 65% of those signs stayed in use during that entire time period. Things like lines, rectangles, triangles, ovals, and circles, like we see here from the end of the Ice Age at a 10,000-year-old site high in the Pyrenees Mountains. And while certain signs span thousands of kilometers, other signs had much more restricted distribution patterns, with some being limited to a single territory, like we see here with these divided rectangles that are only found in northern Spain, and which some researchers have speculated could be some sort of family or clan signs. There is a surprising degree of similarity in the earliest rock art found all the way from France and Spain to Indonesia and Australia. With many of the same signs appearing in such far-flung places, especially in that 30,000 to 40,000 year range, it's starting to seem increasingly likely that this invention actually traces back to a common point of origin in Africa. There could be no doubt that these signs were meaningful to their creators, like these 25,000-year-old bas-relief sculptures from Roque de Vézac in France. We might not know what they meant, but the people of that time certainly did. The repetition of the same signs for so long and at so many sites tells us that the artists were making intentional choices. And that even 5,000 years ago, people were already building on something much older, with its origins stretching back tens of thousands of years to the geometric signs of Ice Age Europe and far beyond, to that point deep in our collective history, when someone first came up with the idea of making a graphic mark and forever changed the nature of how we communicate.